Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Oh, man. It is hot out here. In Los Angeles. And uh, stuff going on. Ants going nuts. Oh, really? My good ants going that's nuts. That's the heat, but maybe sometimes that's an earthquake, too. Ants, uh, I can't figure ants out. Here's the other thing it used to be. I learned from watching cartoons that ants love picnics and they love cakes. They carry them away. They carry them away. Turns out, ants like effing with people more than they actually like food. They like creating giant corridors. Yeah. To to wherever. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're like, uh, it's a million man mark. Yeah. A million? At least. Millions and millions, yeah. Yeah. Black ants, too. But (laughs) the point is, is I'm I'm watching TV. I feel something crawling on my head. Yeah. You know, uh, they're all over the place. And, and, yeah, in the kitchen, but... Just as many in the bathroom. You know, you know, it's like, hey, go after the food at least. Right. Crazy ants. And by the way, we, we've spoken about this in the past. You know, every time someone brings up one of those other uh, animals, uh, it, it's something else in the the, uh, the the wild kingdom, like a spider or something, oh, they eat the bad ants. Where are they? Where are they? Well, by, by the way, the rest of the country has mosquitoes. We got the ants. This, that's our mosquito. Right, it's better, better, better to have the ants than the mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: like once in a while, I'll see a spider or something, and I'll think to myself, "Okay, now you can do your job. Here, go, go get the ants. You know, you'll push them over toward it." No. First off, here, here, let me tell you something about nature. Nature ain't interested in entertaining. <laughs> nature ain't your pony. You, you know what I mean? It's like it's like, hey, bitch, I ain't a clown. You ain't That's the what nature says. Yeah, you ain't the man to the na- to nature. Go get. Go, it, it would happen. There would always be some guy new who had some uh, python or some reptile or something. He's like, we're gonna feed it a mouse. We're gonna feed it a mouse. And then they drop the mouse in the case. And everyone would stare at it for about three days, and nothing would happen. And then you'd you'd leave, and you'd come back, and the. The mouse would be sleeping on top of the right. thing, and then you'd go to bed and you'd wake up. The mouse, the mouse is gone, but it, never in front of you. Right. Never anything good in front of you. And then once in a while, you'll do that thing where you go, "Oh, there's a spider. Oh, there, there's a pill book. Oh man, this is going to be great." You, you put them together, but it just steps over it. Actually, steps on it sometimes. You'll see like the spider like walk through the line of ants and just step over them and just keep walking. They don't seem seem to know they exist. What 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 about these other animals that are supposed to eat the bad ones? You know, you, you always say it. Oh, those the hawks. Oh no, they're eating the rats. They're they're keeping they're eating the field mice. They're eating. The same. How come I never see it? Yeah, I never see. It. I see them flying around. Yeah. I see the hawk flying around. I see the spider. I see all the stuff that's supposed to be doing whatever it's supposed to be doing. Never actually see it eating any of the bad stuff. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all just PR. I mean, never none of it ever happens. I know. I, I would. I would be thrilled. To see, like, like if I could just see, if I saw a spider, like, kicking a cockroach's ass in my kitchen, I'd be like, okay, now we're cool. No, I'll they're, do, they're I, even the score. I do that Indian thing. Yeah. You know, my brother. <laughs> you know, you know the Indians do that? You know, now I owe you. I will leave you alone. You may, you may uh, pass safely on my land. You, you know, but they never do. They're just sitting around. They're doing nothing. So ants going nuts. They're all over the, I, I got a dog. They're all over the dog food. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're just, they just go, they're just insidious. Oh, yeah. You can almost hear the noise they make when they march, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just to getting everywhere, getting everyone's head. And by the way, you can't keep them out. I don't care if you live in a, uh, a submarine. Once they, they get, they get going. Ants. Yeah, once they get, they get going. They go in. And they, they're like, they, here, they come in through invisible portholes. Like, you see them, and they're going, what? There's no crack there. Yeah, where'd that, yeah. Why are they <laughs> they're just pushing through solid matter? How does that it's work? So true, they just appear on the There's surface. There's there, like the window sealed yeah. up. There's weather stripping on yeah. it. There's no big cracks anywhere. It's just they're just piling, right through. All right, I got to do something to get rid of these ants. And don't, don't give me that chalk thing. I'm oh, that tired works. of putting the chalk. You tried that? Well, then you got chalk all over. It your works house. so well. It scares me that stuff maybe, you know, not nah. fit for life for human. All right, yeah. so we- weather uh, weather's a little crazy out here, but uh, yeah. all right, we're cool. So you've had how many days in your new house? Uh, you moved in a week ago. Hmm. How many days have I slept there? Yeah. 
I've slept in my old house about four or five days. Out of the last eight. Yeah. yeah. I keep waking up in the middle you, of the you night. Leave your blanket back there. Uh, last night I, I packed it up and uh, me and my wife went back because we needed the air conditioning. The their new, new air conditioner wasn't working. What is with that? No. Uh, that, 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 uh, don't don't even don't uh, don't even. It's a it's a crazy drive from uh, the uh, new house to the old house. At uh, well, I made one trip at uh, four thirty in the morning. And then two at like two thirty. It's excellent. It's fantastic. It's weird driving in your bathrobe, by the way. It's crazy. Like if, if I get pulled over, oh. uh, they're going to want to see some ID. They're going to be seeing sack. Like I, I got nothing. I'm going to have to make a run for it. <laughs> like, like like some sort of madman just uh, running out, like running out into the wilderness barefoot. Think about crane. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Katie. Yeah. You're 15. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um. My boyfriend and I have been talking about having sex, and we've done some stuff before, not quite as far as sex, but we've been talking about it for quite a long time, and we've been going up for about two months. Mm-hmm. And Stay in that talking phase. That's a good place to rest for a while. How old is he? Did you say two months you've been going out? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's not that long, even months. even in 15-year-old months. Mm-mm. How old is he? Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, he's, all right. He can wait. He's he all right. Wait. Yeah. He'll, he'll build, build character if he waits a little bit. Yeah. All right. All right. Just take it's it. Just, take it slow. It's going to bond you guys together in a way that's going to be surprising to both of you. This is a relation. This is a relationship that will never end naturally. Yeah. If you start having sex too young, it just it just bonds you in a puts you two together in a way that uh, you're not really prepared to deal with. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like your dad? My dad. Um. He's all right, but okay. he's. Like, this is my real, like, first, like, I really want to be with him for a long time relationship. That's good. Yeah, my just dad take it slow. Right. Taking Very, it. When are you 16? Um, next year. My birthday's actually today. Ooh. Oh, you just turned. Oh, well, happy birthday. Yeah, do not have sex. Yeah. You're just 15. You're 14. Yeah, we're calling you 14. Yeah. Don't, don't do it, okay? Mm-hmm. You, you will regret it. I've never met that woman who... Did. Wished she'd uh, gotten rid of it a little bit earlier. Yeah, or certainly if she were 14, 15, or 16, doesn't wish she had waited. That right. woman doesn't exist. Oh, no. No, if anything, uh, just for the humiliation later on when they're sitting around with their girlfriends, you know, the new friends from work, and they're all sitting around. It's like, when did you lose? I was 19. How did, I was 20. How, oh, I lost it young. I lost it 18. Tammy, when did you? 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, another apple margarita. <laughs> another apple. Uh, but they, usually daiquiri. that one goes with a little disclaimer, and then there's a moratorium for six years. No, no. One. Yeah, yeah. The the point is, is uh, I meant apple martini, but I got apple everything, but uh, martini. Here's the point. Uh, yeah, for for girls, it, uh, it it goes on your permanent record. Oh, listen, I hate to say, I'm not you know, I'm not here to say the double standard is a good thing. I'm just here to say it exists. I'm not and, even saying that's a double yeah, standard. I know, I know you're not saying it's a double standard, but, he, but I am. I mean, I'm saying that for girls, you lose your virginity at 13 or 14. It's on your permanent record, and it's a mild stigma that you sort of carry around. Yes, it's true. And as a guy, you lose your virginity at 13 or 14. Eh, it's a little bit of a conversation piece. E- even though if it's a stigma Thank that you. people are concerned Please with. Please agree with me. I, I, there may be a stigma. Thank I don't, you. I'm not being a female. I don't know, but. Wah, 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 wah. I, you're not I, being a female. You don't know. I don't know. How do you cure your patients when you're not stricken with the same disease? I, I don't. Know. Aha! Yeah, but stigma is a little bit of a, a personal kind of a feeling. But the deal is, here's no, the point. It's a societal but, thing. But the point is, they don't complain about that. They complain about how painful it was, how confusing it was, how miserable they were, how it wasn't right. It they, they just, they just was a painful experience all the way no, around. I, I know, but wait, and well, they may well, carry a stigma. You're also. crapping on my point. No, no, I'm saying it's your point and. All right. Didn't sound like that. I beg your pardon. So you're sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. That was because I did mean. Yeah, it, it is. It's true. They don't enjoy it, but um, what I'm saying is, is you don't really enjoy it at 17 or 14. <laughs> the first time out of the gate, it's you wouldn't enjoy it at 30, right. 34 if you did it for the first time then. Or and, for that matter. And, <clears throat> and and there are certain things. And one day we should sit down and put together a short list of things that you sort of carry around with you your whole life. You have to sort of explain them to people. How about right now? All right. All right. What would that Let's be? work so, that out. All right. Well, for instance, uh, for guys, uh, sporting prowess, like in, at the high school level. 
Yeah. You know, like playing like on what a sport. You, like what game? Oh. What, what, what did you letter? Well, I played on the varsity, varsity you know, whatever, whatever yeah. team. Yeah. It, it gives you it, it gives you a some degree of credibility yes. uh, later on in life. Yes. People yeah. uh, something people, to relate to. Yeah. Sort of, you, you know, you can you can hang with the guy that's. You know, yeah, stuff. although although it get, it does get marginally uh, insulting, as uh, people have heard me say mm, fifteen hundred times on the show. I was first team All Valley at football. No, yeah. never heard have that. You, on have the you show heard before. that? No, Chris, Chris, have you heard that? First team All Valley. I had heard that. Yeah. No, oh, okay. not not second team. Not not uh, first team. No. How many guys on our? Uh, how many guys on the, the North Hollywood High School football team were uh, first team All Valley? You suppose I was All CIF, but in the tiny little leagues. He the played eight man. You really shouldn't bring that up. <laughs> No, we play with the big boys. Two guys. Me and my buddy Mike Duran. But here's my point. Here's my point. Get a lot of mileage out of that. Yeah, of course. And then now here's the insulting part. Everyone. Really? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N- you? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> that's it's like a, you? Yeah, yeah. It's all Valley. All right. What? Okay, okay. Now it's getting insulting. If, if you ask me, like, one more time, what, was it some sort of, like, special team? <laughs> Did they bang the drum in order to know when to snap the ball? It was, like, retarded, blind ki- uh, kids or... This is regular kids, yeah. Nice. Really? All right, so yeah. there's that. Insulting. There's also what, right, age, so what do, age a guy starts masturbating. Do something in sports. Right. Uh, that's a good thing. And, and, again, you embellish. You just embellish the sports thing. But say you played on right, the right. varsity right. football or yeah, track yeah. team or something like that. Right. Uh for girls, virginity losing. Mm-hmm. Uh, eh, masturbation for a guy neither here nor there. The age he starts. You've mentioned that. Ama- that's on the record. It's on the record, but it doesn't really matter whether you it start. It doesn't matter, but it's just, it's a, we're just talking about that would matter, what's on the record, what you carry around. Yeah, but but unless it matters, it doesn't matter if it's on the record. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds redundant. It's been a source of humiliation for you. We brought it up many times. Well, I got started late. That's what I'm saying. And the, the, the nefarious circumstances. Yeah, but it's weirder when you get you have that weirdo that gets started at 11 and a half. Well, part of the record. That's the point. Okay. Right? Here's the thing. All right. But it's hard to control when that starts, yes, you know, yes. for a guy. And that why, that, that's <laughs> why I, I'm not going to give him advice as to when to start beating all off. Right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, a uh, little sports is good. Ah, you know what's nice for a guy? Huh. Beat a guy up in high school or junior high. One fight. One fight. So, you can embellish it. Do you have to lose it? That, just, just be in it. Just be in it. Yeah. What happened? You're in. You're in the cafeteria. Yeah. Lunch line. Some ki- kid yeah, tried fine. to take cuts. It's good if he's another nationality. <sighs> Unless you're like black or Mexican. I don't think you want to say white guy. Say another. Say if you're black or Mexican. Say black or Mexican. And if you're white, say black or Mexican. But don't say white. If you, it, it doesn't. And never say Jew. You get zero credit. Zero credit. So the, the point is, is get no fight for a guy. Uh, that's hey, a good hey, thing. Hey. Yeah, there's a guy because everyone will trade stories. Oh yeah, this guy. Oh, but, degrees. The degree. Well, we're 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 building up to that. Right. Better you should do poorly at a good college and do well at a decent college or poor college. Yes. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, yes, I know. You just say you went to Yale, you went to Harvard, you went to Princeton, and everyone just sort of looks at you. Oh, wow. Hey, they don't go like, well, what was your GPA or what was your emphasis or you know? They just they'll leave you alone. It's a stamp. Yeah, just just yeah. try to get get into some college right, people so have heard of. Yeah, I'm with that. <clears throat> Best Sounds college. cool. Uh, here's another thing you can do. Um, some sort of belt, some yeah, black belt, that. like yeah, taekwondo yeah, yeah. Yeah, or something well. like that. Something, Did something that, that sounds like you know, oh, here's yeah. Well, we were talking about that stuff that no one else does. Mm. You know, like fencing or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I fenced in college. You know, bring that up. You'll be the best guy in the room at it. You'll be like, and all you got to do is, it, if it's anything like fencing, ice skating, marksmanship, archery, this close to making the Olympic team, <laughs> and no one will ever question you. They're like, prove it. Let's see some documentation. Show me a medal. You know, it's always just yeah. everybody. How many people were this close to, yes. you know, making it in some obscure sport? Right. They're in the Olympic uh, selection process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's a, that's important thing. Now, now girls, I'm trying to think, and th- this goes for girls and boys, but I think we're thinking like uh, men here for a yeah, second. Yeah. Uh, so you want to get in a fight. Uh, it's good, it's good, to, uh, good to get out of a, uh, I don't know, either beat a ticket or outrun a cop or something like that. That's nice. You're just going the whole antisocial route here. No, no. Yeah, I, every, I mean, everything you carry, everything goes in your record has got to be like a, a negative mark against it's you. It's good to say you got shot with a BB gun. Ugh. Just yeah, one good. shot that's with a BB good. gun is a good yeah. thing. Funny. Yeah, I've been shot with a BB gun. Chris, you've been shot with a BB gun? No. I uh, see. Okay, well, I'll do that. I'll shoot you tonight with a BB <laughs> gun. Turn. Okay. 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 No more talking. All right, so here's, here's the thing. Uh, what, what is it for women? What do women need? Women, uh... What age would they start menstruating? Oh, you know you know, it'd be nice? Uh, we, they can't control know, that, Drew. The they can't control. Okay, here's a good thing for a chick. Don't bang the guy on your prom night. 
Right. That's a permanent record. Okay. It's a little slutty permanent record move that, uh, that you know, your husband's going to want to know. The only advice you're giving to women so far is how not to be a slut. Okay. And then where to go to college. Well, listen, <laughs> women. That's what you're doing. Well, here's the thing about women. I mean, you know. You know what I'm saying? What? Well, you know. I mean, they're... They, they don't need. They don't. They don't. They don't get looked. They don't get looked at with the uh, jeweler's loop like guys do. They don't have to be that. They impressive. do by other women, though. Okay, here's you what. Here, no, here's what women have to do. They have to not lose their virginity before thirteen, and they have to not get fat. And that's about it. See if you can not get Let's strung see, out. See what some, some of our, drugs. our female callers think about that. Maybe they'll have some more insightful things for us. To Are do. you kidding? <laughs> no. I will see. We'll no. see. No, look, uh, uh, women, oh, they cannot get pregnant. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. There, there's a little, there's a little permanent Tip record it, yeah. thing, having having a kid or two and not being married. You know, they can single mom thing. Not get an STD. Not getting STDs and icing. Not getting the HIV. That's, that's, that's always that's, good. That's always a good, good thing. No, but I, think about little things like not losing it on your like. like you, look, you can screw your boyfriend of uh, three years on prom night, but uh, yeah. the, the uh, geek that just asked you ten days before the prom. You can't have sex with them. No, no. It's going to piss your husband off who's working to get in your pants for like three months who you worked with like ten years later. You know what I'm saying? There's a yeah. little, little permanent recordy things. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Jackie? Yeah? You're 14? Uh-huh. What's up, baby doll? Okay, well, um, first of all, I want to say I love you guys. Um, but my question, I heard that... Um, like if you use a vibrator too much, you can like uh, lo like lose sensitivity. That's true. It's Is that right. really true? No, it's not usually not a big deal, but yeah, you can. I mean, and usually it's not permanent, but uh, yeah, you can desensitize yourself. How often would you have to use a vibrator for that to happen? I'm not sure. There's a number on that one. Yeah, I'm con currently conducting a study in my basement. Oh really? Yeah. On women or yourself? Both. Just oh, really? everybody. <laughs> everybody. Because some, you know, how vigorously you use it, how frequently, how... Uh, uh, we're working, we're factoring all that, all that all in. That. You got little big graphs in your... I oh, it's crazy. Test tubes and things, things. <laughs> Bubbling, dried eyes bubbling out of beakers. It's huge. Yeah. So, so Jackie, Jackie... Yeah, it's just until you feel the sensitivity going down, that's when you might want to back who's, off. Who's a vibrator are you, are you using? Well, it used to be my sister's, but it's mine now. <laughs> oh, oh, she went off to college or jail? <laughs> well, she's a lot older than me. She's married and stuff now. So. Oh, that's nice. Did she bequeath this to you, or you sort of found it? or had this I sort of work? stole it. <laughs> oh, really? She yeah. wondered where it went. She asked around the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd that go? Imagine that conversation. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't creep you out just a little bit. You know, chicks are, uh, by the way... Um, Jack is versatile. Yeah, but chicks normally are weird. Like, if, if somebody, like, uh, you know, it's like when I'm taking a leak in the sink, you know. That violates... No, They're like, no. oh, my God, I, have, <laughs> I brushed my teeth out. All right, all right, Your Highness, I'll rinse it out, you know. I brushed my teeth. Yeah, I, I understand uh, whatever... you're saying, that the, the, using somebody else's vibrator is even more of a... Oh, oh, oh yeah. More peeing in the sink. No, I mean, uh, once in a while, like, um, I'll wipe my ass with a sock or something like that, you know. <laughs> Women will be like, oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe these aren't great examples. <laughs> Point is... You blow a blow a loogie into the sink or something, and so yeah. it's like, oh my god, I have to but that dish. I have yeah. to, yeah, that di the the dish had goulash on it last night. It's right. going to have clam chowder on it tomorrow night. Yeah. You wash it. It's no big deal. You say you take hawks up at the dinner table. You just well, what, what? Lay them out lay on the dinner well, where the point nice. is is women are normally squeamish about, kind about of that yes, kind of stuff. Jackie's and good to go. Though. The vibrator, just idea that something that was inside of her sister. Well, freak because you out? I can't get my own because I can't, so like, is, I'm too young to This is get a, a matter of necessity here, Adam. This is, mm. this is Jackie is inventive. Okay. So I'll yeah. tell you what you could do. Mm hmm <laughs> Well, like, when I was, like, in, in junior high, I think, we used to go uh, buy beer. And we would buy beer. We'd, like, wait out front of the liquor store. And then the, this is, by the way, when before lawyers effed everything up for everybody, you could just do stuff like this. Like, now no one would do this because you'd think you'd get sued, you know. But you just stand out front of the uh, liquor store at 10 o'clock on a Friday night during the summer until some guy looked kind of cool came by. Like, this was the dude who was wearing the bell bottoms and the boots and had the... Uh, Set, had the pork chop sideburns. It's, it's the Matthew McConaughey character in Days and Confused. Yeah, that's the guy. that's right. The dude, except for this dude, was not only the cooler dude who graduated a few years before you. This guy was a little more. He was pr he was probably like ten years before, yeah, not he, two years before. Very, very much a stoner, overweight. This is the this is the adult. And I didn't have to be overweight. This was because he, he could be spindly too. 
He has a speed guy. This is it's usually this, the guy buying a case of beer. It's just it's just the dude who on a Friday night is buying a pack of Winston's and a pack of Mickey's Big Mouth, and he's heading. He's, he's, he's getting a sixer of Mickey's, and he's heading back to the apartment to watch a little porn. And you head him off at the pass, and he doesn't have kids of his own. Yeah. He's, he, he could be in his 40s. He doesn't have a kid, you know. Okay. And it's like, hey, uh, dude, could you buy me a, a six-pack of Schlitz? Uh, you know, he's more interested in the money you're going to give him. Like, mm. huh? What? Oh, you hand him five bucks. Oh, yeah, whatever. Like, almost a little confused as to why you're not buying it yourself. Right. <laughs> you know, strolls in, hands you the uh, sixer. Never any change, by the way. And then uh, splits. You could do this as a girl with uh, vibrators. You stand out front of the uh, the naughty bookstore. Just wait for somebody to... Wait for some dude. Same dude. <laughs> Same dude's heading in. He, yeah, because he goes by a liquor store, gets the six-pack of Mickey's, gets the pack of Winston's, the porn. then swings swings by the Venus Fair, picks oh. up a, makes a quick pit stop at one of the booths, and then I'm heads getting, home. I'm getting this really uncomfortable feeling of disgust. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough world. There's no doubt about it. It ain't pretty. I just report on it. The uh, point is, is girl could get a vibrator that way. Could also get one via mail order, but you'd have to guard the mailbox. You don't want that baby showing up uh, when your folks oh, are home. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's keep on keeping on, Drew. Yeah, here we go. Oh, here's the whole thing about being scrambled with a uh, vibrator, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't think you damage any nerve endings. It's just you get used to a certain thing, and uh, that's you, what you, you get used to. You actually can. I don't know if you damage it permanently, but you can uh, change the nerve ending function a little bit. All mm right. -hmm. And there's something called a, the, the, the uh, jackhammer operators get that. Yeah. Stacy? Yeah. 22? Mm-hmm. What's um, up? I was actually working at a party this weekend. It was like Saturday night, and I ended up hooking up with a couple of guys there. A couple guys? Working at a party? Yeah. I'm a stripper. Oh, okay. And Hold on. You have the voice. Yeah. Hold, Hold on. on a second, Stacy. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, now don't go anywhere. Because okay. we got to take a quick break. I was just thinking we needed a visit from him. It's been a little while. Huh? Yeah. Uh, phone screener Brian, do not uh, hang not up on Stacy. Because uh, we're going to take a quick break. She's a stripper. She's working a bachelor party, I Some guess. Kind of party. Hooked up with a couple of guys. It all sounds good. Oh, boy. Talk to her after this. <laughs> All right, let's get cranking. What do you say? Oh, cranking. Uh oh. Crank anchors tomorrow night. Well, Tuesday night could be tonight. Oh, we're, we're some people hear listening. the show yeah. on a on That's a day true. delay. Yeah, ten thirty on Comedy Central. Favorite show, all new season. Drive. Crank anchor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just close my eyes and picture that young chap. Didn't you? Drew? All right, let's uh, get back to Stacy. Stacy is uh, 22. <clears throat> She's an exotic dancer. Yes, Stacy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And were you working at a bachelor party last night? No, it was just some guy's party that I would know. So. Oh, you got that. Oh, that yeah. sexual abuse. Oh, voice. you didn't hear that voice? I did, but now it's... I heard it right out of the gate. I, I did, too. I thought possibly now I'm hearing it loud and clear. Um, was it a regular party or a bachelor party? Just a regular party. Oh, really? What do you yeah. do at the regular parties? Just, like it was some guy's birthday, so. Birthday party. Oh. Yeah. You just, do you strip? You do the, yeah. what do you do? Mm -hmm. what? Strip. Do you play then, games? What's that? Do you play games? Not too much. I mean, whatever they want, really. It's, I'm there for them. <laughs> but you don't, you don't do the, like, we're going to do the uh, around the world or the uh, feed the kitty or the golden waterfall or. <laughs> mudslide, which is... Dude, food. I don't know if you've ever had that mudslide, Drew. I have any I'm happy to say. You will find it. Hey, I'm going to sell all of the... I got a fanny bag. Some goes to blow. Fizzy fans, like the kids, they were doing the vibe. Candy stage three. I got to get a gig. I got to get a drink. I can't get a club. All right, so so you just you stripped... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just you and uh, the big black dude who carries the boombox and makes change and is uh, the bouncer guy? Pretty much, yeah. 
What's his name? I don't want to say. No, oh, okay. Just his first <laughs> name. Come on. Norm. Arthur. Arthur. Mm -hmm. All right. So he comes. He's like your security, right? Yes. Hello, I'm Lucius. <laughs> and you show up at the party, and uh, you get naked, right? Mm-hmm. And then what happened where you had sex with somebody or two well, people? I was doing private shows, like in the back room or whatever, and I ended up hooking up with, like, a couple different guys. In the same... One, one of them the was other? Like, what's that? One of them was like what? One of them was, like, really rough. And so, like, I'm still sore. Like, I feel like... Like, I got cramps, and, like, it feels like bruised down there. Like, and that was Saturday night. Well, well, wait a second now. <clears throat> uh... You, you know, you take the guys. So then you do that thing. You dance for all the guys at the party. Right. And then you do that thing where you go like, hey, you want a private, you know, you guys can have private sessions where we yeah. go into the uh, master bathroom. <laughs> you sit on the toilet and I give you a lap dance. But if you're a little naughty, you actually have sex with some of the guys. But do you charge them? Yeah. How, mu how much? It's like 50 bucks for every private. Uh, 50 yeah. bucks for every for private. For every private, I every like private show uh, right I'm hip but then what about the guys who get to have sex with you do you have to pay extra they give like extra tips oh just just an extra tip like I mean I make some serious cash from that like hey she's not a prostitute Adam what are you talking about no no, no well, hold on a second what, I, what I'm you, saying is, is yeah, you you want to you want to get a private dance? You pay fifty bucks. All right, so you go into the guy sits on the foot of the bed and she does her thing for uh, ten minutes, but she actually bones you. I mean that, then isn't that a bump? A little, uh, you know, has boner penalty or hazardous uh, duty or something like? She gets that. I'd be. And by the way, you know, when each guy pays fifty bucks and you go back there and they're like. What happened? And one guy's like, oh, man, I beat off so good in the sink after she left. And that guy's like, hey, screwed her. That other guy, first guy's pissed. Outrage. Stacy. Yeah. So uh, you, you don't charge for the sex? Not really. I mean. Yeah. Uh, you need, you need a, an agent, my friend. <laughs> you got to charge if you have sex. You understand? Is, is Arthur still standing there doing all that? No, no he's, he's out not. in, like, the, the living room or whatever. Yeah, he's chilling. Okay, so you had sex with two of the guys. Right. And, well, uh, and, well, and, yeah? Like, a few more than that, but. few more than that? few more. How many guys? Six. <gasps> Six? Wow. Yeah. Out of how many? There's probably 15 or so there. Unacceptable. Now, why didn't you have sex with the, uh, other nine guys? Is this? I don't know. It just didn't happen. <laughs> well, do you, do you have to be attracted to the guy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, in a, in a relative way. Like, Yeesh. He can't have polio. <laughs> All right, so you were attracted to the six guys you had sex with? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. How often do you, do you do this? Um, Once or twice a week. And, and that's prostitution, right? Well, she's not charging <laughs> <laughs> not charging, right? No. All right. Now, so uh, at 50 bucks a uh, session, and you had six guys, mm -hmm. how many guys you give the uh, private session dance to? Mm, like probably eight. All right. So yeah, there's 400 bucks, right? Yeah. All right. And you get to keep all that money? Yeah. Oh, Okay. It's yeah. a decent living. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris over here gets uh, 10 bucks an hour for a while. Don't you want to hear what uh, kind of Watch horrible me. ritualistic abuse you had to go through as a kid? Yeah. No. You're not interested in that. Stacy. Yeah. Any uh, any abuse go on uh, in your childhood? Weirdo stepdads? Uncles molest you? That kind of thing? Not like I, I kind of remember like my dad touching me, but that was just like once. All right. Like, and then he, then he went to jail? No. No one ever beat on you? What's that? No one ever hit you? Um, no, not really. Hmm. Impossible. Well, hold on a second, Drew. Hold on. Stacey's let me say this. not born. Oh, let me say this. Let me say this, Drew. Sometimes, sometimes you find people that are, uh, just please listen to me. I'm listening. They're, uh, they have, here's a combination. Exquisite low self-esteem. Yeah. There are a lot of just throwaway kids out there. Yeah. They're not, they're not. Severely neglected. 
Yeah, but, they're not yeah. wholesalely abused. They yeah. just they grow up like feral children. Right. They just, just sort of run around. Everyone, me and everyone, I practically everyone I knew yeah. just sort of just you just grow up. It's like you learn you, real early. Here's a message: you, you better you better take care of your own ass. You yeah. just you better take care of your own ass. Like yeah. you better figure out how to do something. Yeah, right, you mix that. So you mix this sort of super low self esteem kind of uh, mixed with uh, this weird sort of street survival thing. Like I got to look out for number one. Mixed with uh, just j stupid, just kind of yeah. dim. And no real sort of moral compass. You throw addict in there and you get that. <laughs> you throw addict in. All right. Stacy? Yeah. You addicted to anything? Um, I drink and I smoke marijuana a lot. All right. All right. So uh, what did your, uh, now your parents got divorced when you were younger? No. I mean, they lived together and stuff. They were together the whole time I was growing up, but my dad was never around that much. How come? Uh, he just made himself gone a lot. I mean, <laughs> oh, you got that, Adam? Man, let's do <laughs> Love Line reenactment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my parents were together the whole time we were growing up, but my dad just wasn't there that much. Where was your dad? Uh, he just made himself gone. Oh, okay. Let me, let me get that straight. I'll get that written down. Here. He yeah, made himself gone. Because he's gone. Well, because... maybe he's a magician. Oh. Hmm. Was there a cloud of smoke left behind? <laughs> no. He just, he, he was a, what, he drank, he was a philanderer, what'd he do? Yeah, he was always out, like, he would come home real late and stuff. I don't really uh, remember that much. Okay, all right. You don't remember your childhood? Not no, I doesn't remember dad that much. That, she doesn't, oh, okay. so she doesn't remember her childhood. All right, Stacy. That starts to feel <clears throat> Well, we worry about you. Uh, and you're, you're complaining about vaginal pain. No kidding. No yeah. S. You need to get regular pelvic exams. You could have an STD. You could, who knows what's going on? More traffic than the LAX passing through that Eesh. vagina. Yeah. Let's have, get the bomb squad. Stacy. Yeah. She's uh, she's lucky the uh, fire department didn't close it down. I say close down Terminal Seven here. Let's go. No, it just mean uh, you know over occupancy. Oh. There's too many see. too many people, yeah. and the fire marshal come in close the place down. This uh, vagina is only made for 100 guys. You got about 150 dudes in here. Yeah. Yeah. She will get By the something. way, speaking of the uh, permanent record. Oh, you total number. That's you know, you know what they ought to have? They have ought to have a uh, vaginal uh, odometer. Because <laughs> you know, when you're buying a used car, I mean, that's what you're looking at, right? What's What's the reading on that? Uh, <laughs> People can get under the dash though and change that. Well, that's uh, the other one too. Is like I've probably been with a few chicks. Like eh, twelve thousand miles, not bad. It turned over. Oh yeah. That's 212. It's oh. turnover twice. Oh. Yeah, it should be an odometer, yeah? All right. Vagometer? All right. Stacy. Yes? Yeah. Uh, boy, it's going to be hard to tell you to uh, stop doing this, but and I don't think you're going to, but how about you just stop having sex with the guys? Yeah. Could you do that? Yeah, I could try that. Yeah? Yeah. You just you're putting yeah. yourself in very serious. We worry harm's about way. you. We yeah, really do. Really, Stacey, come on. Yeah, go ahead and keep keep the dancing going. <laughs> save of that. Course, of course. Save that money. Yeah. Save the money. I mean, and, he, still, uh, he still gets the fifty dollars for the private dances. Those guys aren't going in there expecting <laughs> to get have sex. Uh, you know that's the whole thing too. You know, she's calling from Cincinnati. Maybe you know. I think there's different expectation levels in different uh, parts of the country. Uh. Because I tell you, I watched that. Uh, hookers on the brink uh, show yeah. or on the edge or whatever it is like this uh, HBO special and it's like uh, uh, it's like the guys in the car and it's like yeah uh, how much for uh, BJ and the chick's like that'd be $15 come on baby you gotta do me better than that I'm thinking $15 That's a, I give the guy 20 bucks gives me a ride to the airport I like it's a handy <laughs> I just literally the, the guy he's getting He's getting he's getting fifteen bucks he wants for a BJ and he's like Psh. Lines. <laughs> he's like you're way out of line. I mean, I, I you know, I could see paying nine dollars for a great you know, maybe if uh <clears throat> you know, Princess Di came from the grave and gave me a Hummer, I, I could see maybe then like twelve dollars. But uh fifteen, what, twenty dollars for sec oh come on. Come on. Come on now. Yeah. So I, rea I realize in different parts of the country, things things vary a little bit. <clears throat> I think Vegas, Los Angeles, New York, yeah, plan on spending a couple dollars if uh, you want actual intercourse with a stranger. Well, here's another stripper who wants to follow up on that. Michelle? Yeah. You're 19? Yes. What's happening? Okay, I just had a comment about her. 
sucks. Like, yes. honestly, you're going to have, you're going to be sore after six guys. And I'm a dancer myself, and I do not sleep with any guys mm. whatsoever at any of my parties. Mm. I do one-on-one -on -one shows, and they ask for sexual favors, and I will leave, and my company totally backs me up on it. And you don't need Wait, to sleep with you'll people. You'll do what? Well, hold on. Ooh. They'll ask for sexual yeah. favors, and you, you'll do what? If they continue, I'll say no, and if they continuously ask or act rude towards me, I'll leave. And my company backs me up on that. Because oh. that's prostitution, you know. And, of course, your coochie's going to hurt after six guys, honey. Thank you. And in how long of a time? And I make just as much, if not more, money than she does, and I don't sleep yeah. with guys. Now, how does, how does uh, what do you charge for the private dance, by the way? Um, I charge about 50 about 50. And, and uh, how long does that go? A couple of songs, 10 minutes? What is it? It's about 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15. Now, now if Fat bucket headed guy with a jawline carved in with a beard. Shoot me. <laughs> All right. I tell you, that guy gets laid, though. That guy gets silly because it's always, uh, you know what he does? He swoops down like a hawk on the chicks that are broken up with their boyfriends. <laughs> you, need a, you need a ride home? To the, you you want to ride home? Yeah. No, Mark? Yeah, he's a prick. I never liked that guy. You could do better. You want, you want to come to the apartment do a bump, bump cool. of coke? You want to do some coke? Oh. Yeah, that's how it works. You just, just a little bump. Go uh. to, and then he just swoops. And then he gets laid. He gets a little bit. He gets a little. And hopefully her boyfriend had sex with some other stripper, so it's like a little payback time. You know what I mean? All right, fabulous. Where, where's uh, did Michelle go? No, she's no, I'm still here. here. She's here, talking here. to her. Michelle? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, heard the phone drop. Uh, fifty bucks. Uh, now, if you like a guy, let's I just want to get into it with the strippers for a little bit here. Uh, if a guy's cute, if you're into the guy, he gets the fifteen minute dance, right? Um, it's well, yeah, it's just kind of like I don't know. It's not really if you like the guy or not, as much as it is. If you if you like a guy, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not as much as if I like the guy or not. It's just hold on a second. That's what I I, I can't figure out if the phone screwed no, up. No, that's her. Screwed up. It's no, her. but it's, part of it is the phone. Part it's of doing it is that thing she, where it she's drops not, out. She's not finishing her sentence. She's not. And by the way, it would be such a for guy. It's such a zero no brainer. Like if there was some bachelorette party, yeah. and you know, there's a couple of super hot tight chicks there, and a couple of blobs, you know, and you had to go into the, the back room and whatever, you'd give the half assed uh, five minute uh, super abridged, you know, lap dance to the to the uh, big uh, fatty you brought back there, right? And then if the hot chick got back, she get she get the marathon one, right? It would just be easy. You know, chicks, I, I don't know if they don't admit it or they don't think that way or they, uh, no. Uh. Well, they're all business. Michelle? I do think that way. I do think that way. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If, if you, <laughs> you got a guy you're attracted to, you're going to give him a little better lap dance, right? Yeah, definitely. All right. And what do you but do? I would never, we, yeah, I don't give out my phone anything. numbers or I don't no. give out my phone number, my personal yeah. line if they want me to come back, then I give them the business line. Right. Um, well. I never sleep with anybody. Right, unless Charlie Sheen comes pulling up. And once you get a celebrity, you got to do something. No, yeah. I don't think and so. I, she's calling from Riverside, so I'm sure you got the A-list out there. You got like Clooney, but the, the point <laughs> the point is, is all right. So you shouldn't have sex with the guys. It's all business. You make your money. You have no, a boyfriend? No. 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 Well, well, well then what is no? <laughs> so, so what's wrong, by the way, if you gave a lap dance to a guy and he was an attractive guy and you liked him? Why wouldn't you no. give him your number? Um, I no, don't know, because I don't make business. business. I don't make my business with my pleasure. She's, no. trying, she's trying to negotiate boundaries in a, in a situation that's yeah. pretty <laughs> troubled already. And her thing is, well, this is where I draw the line. So she has to meticulously, fastidiously hold the line there, but it's an arbitrary place. No. Yeah. Yeah, believe me, you know, I, I could send uh, half the guys who've been on this show, just send, like, Jeremy Piven over there or something, he'd get a yeah. BJ. Right, and so that's the point. It's that she she get her. claims to hold that line, but it's a weird, such a weird bizarre line to hold. The, 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 so it's such a boundaryless situation already. That it's yeah, just, you meet uh, a nice guy, give him your number. That's all I'm saying. All right, we'll take a break. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, yeah! 
Yeah! All right, let's get it on. Got to get it on now. Let's get it on. It's the love line of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's that's go. Stripper talk got you going. Let's get it on. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't been to a strip joint in a long time. Yeah, imagine that. Got to get out to a strip joint. Yeah. Yeah. Put the twenty on there. Make sure and tip I made in the bathroom. Three of the girls are going to martini tonight. Buy that mini bottle of champagne. I'll show you appreciate it. Plenty of parking. Hot dogs and dogs. All the draft beer. Nickel. Wow. Carry it, say shake, say shake. That green view would bring me over the lights on in the morning. Uh, yeah, Delta 719er coming in for the East West. <laughs> <laughs> runway, runway Zebra, uh, Fox Clear to land. Charlie's clear to land. <laughs> yeah, it would be funny if they actually started doing some air traffic work. Doing <laughs> stuff. They're uh, auctioning off cattle. Oh, I'm on 29, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, the house they filmed Psycho in. The Jaws. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Here we go. Here's Michelle. Here's Michelle. 22. Michelle? What's happening? Yeah. Hi. What's up? About six or seven months ago, I noticed this small little, like, kind of a lump on my, on the outer part of my vagina. And I, I know I haven't had sex in over a year, or unprotect, unprotected sex anyway, so I was wondering what that could possibly be. Mm, it's a smooth lump? It's, um, I don't know, and I noticed two more this morning that are kind of coarse. The other one is smooth, but the two that I have now are, are kind of coarse. Well, the coarse little raised area is a wart usually. Mm. So okay. smooth areas can be cysts. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Michelle, <laughs> we're, we'd only be absolutely guessing. You've okay. got to have somebody examine that. Why, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Because I don't have health, in, health insurance to, right now. Go to Planned Parenthood. Yeah. There's a lot to go to County Health Services. Just yeah. get a pelvic exam. Yeah, okay. County. Would, would a wart show up after almost like seven or eight months of without having sex? Sure. I mean, absolutely. The, Ab yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about I that, that Barthlin's gland, time? Drew? What Barthlin's, about that? Yeah, one? Barthlin's gland down there, they can get inflamed. They make a Barthlin's right. gland cyst. Could be a cyst. But uh, if it's a coarse feeling or looks like it feels like a ward, it's a ward. And that's uh, something that needs to be taken care of. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Anthony. Anthony? Hey, what's going on, guys? You're 22. Yeah, hi. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I love you guys' show. I watch or listen to it all the time. Thank you. Uh, anyways, uh, I just had a question. I've been dating this girl for. Uh, probably like a month now and uh everything's going well i really like her but uh i've been finding out from her friend that she has had like a little bit of a like an abusive past uh, so i you know i listen to you guys a lot i know you guys always talk about that uh you know that they look for that who looks uh, for that you know what i mean like are they uh, typically if, if a girl has a, an abusive past that they they uh, are attracted to that type of guy Oh, I see. They're looking for more abuse. They're reenacting the abuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah so that can be. I just, I'm, should I, what, sh what should I look out for? I By guess? the way, I, an hmm. abuse victim either is to be the victim or the abusor. So you may be, you may, uh, some abuse may be coming your way. Hey, yeah, or both. Or both. Oh, really? Back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, chicks usually the ab the abused and uh, the abusor as the, the guys, but then women will end up doing. The, believe me, the kind of abuse that they'll deal out is going to be much more devastating over the long term. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, she, right, so, well, she was the abused. Um, what happened to her? What happened to her? Uh, nothing, nothing physical that I know of. But her friends telling me that her dad was really, uh, I guess, all her life been really uh, verbal, like ver just verbal abuse, calling her yeah. like a slut and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, and right. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I really am really interested in this girl. I really want to date her. I just don't. Right, just right. expect a little trouble. Go ahead just and do it. it. Yeah, definitely do it. Hang in there. Stay don't firm. get her pregnant. Don't get her pregnant. Realize that if you do start getting close to her, that's when she's probably going to sabotage this. Yeah. When you actually do get close and good feelings start coming, that's when she's going to do something to blow it apart. Where's yeah. my just bourbon? expect that. And yeah. just even get her to hang in. It'd be good for her if she could. All right. All right we're going to take a uh, little bit of a break. You know what I like most about uh, the... Uh, Labor Day weekend. What's that? And uh, just vacations in general is listening to talk radio and hearing the replacement guys they have on, like at midnight on right. Labor Day. And like, yeah, this is John Chalmers with uh, real estate and religion <laughs> on the line. Uh, you call in. You have any questions about religion or real estate? Don't hear like, replacement stuff knocking over in the background. The guy talking. I was like the Quaalude type cadence, and you think, wow, well, yeah, this guy gets on the air. Chris, that's what you you should be on. For that's what you should be doing. Holiday replacement? Right. Yes. On Christmas, I want you, if, if Christmas falls on a, uh, a love, is it always on the same day? No. Same, no. Same. no. Yeah, yeah. It could fall on a, it could fall on a, on a work day, day for yes. us. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. You fill in for me. Sweet. Okay. We'll take a, a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. Turn that down, please. Thank you. There we go. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. All right. Jamie Kennedy coming in uh, a little bit uh, later on this week. Beth is uh, on the horn. She lost her virginity. Guy dumped her two weeks later. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Mm. Beth? Yeah, I'm here. What's happening, baby doll? Okay, well, um, I was with, we've known each other since seventh grade, and... We hooked up one night after I got in a fight with a boyfriend, and we Hold went on, to me, the... me and you, or is this some other oh, guy no, you're talking this about? This other guy, the guy that broke up with me, that I lost it to. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got so excited for a second there. <laughs> All right, so we never hooked up. Oh, no. We, no, we never hooked up. Oh, okay. Well, whatever, keep going. <laughs> okay, so I hooked up with him that night, and we ended up like going home together and stuff. And me, um, me and you? No, I'm sorry, me and the guy. Let's call him Greg. Okay, all right. Well, you keep saying we. You keep saying we I'm, ended up, I'm and so sorry. I'm like, oh, cool. I kind of must have been together. drunk. <laughs> okay, all right, so well. you and you and Greg, whoever he is, you went home together. What does that mean? Well, um, it was like really late. My dad, he has this rule: if if you're not home by three a.m., don't bother coming home. <sighs> oh, this isn't what he had in mind, by the way. But... <laughs> Drew uh, has the exact same ru rule, except for you have to move 3 a.m. up to 9 p.m. That's right. And then you have to be craps himself and calls the National Guard. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, other than that, exactly the same, yeah. yes? Yeah. Kids aren't home by 9 p.m. Crap, crap yourself. Call the Air National Guard. Yeah, that's right. Amber Alert. Yeah. Beth? <laughs> oh, yeah. by the way. Get all know, those, those freeway out, signs lit up. Out here, we got the, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, I, okay. Okay, I'm not yeah. going to launch into this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not, not going to go sick on something. But yeah. um, <clears throat> be uh, here. Here's the thing. I'm going to finish with Beth. Yeah. And then, uh, kids, uh, strap yourselves in and prepare for a hippo flop size <laughs> rant <laughs> of what was oh, those freeway. Amber alerts. The freeway. freeway. Sense, yeah. And by the way, they got out here, and maybe they have them nationally. Have these amber alerts when a kid is missing. They flash it on the freeway sign. It was named after a young girl, obviously named Amber, who was, who was taken away. A uh, couple problems. A, you can't name it after a chick whose name is a color because you hear like red alert and like yeah. code orange and uh, that that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Amber alert sounds like well, it's not quite a red alert. It was just amber. Amber seems weird. Yeah. Even Amber, just a name. I mean, Amber's a fine name, but when you do an Amber Alert, and then you start, then it starts bleeding into all this terrorism thing. Like, well, we're in, we're in orange, or we're in yellow, or in Amber, we're in fuchsia. It, it's a little, it's a little weird when you hear the Amber Alert. But uh, the point is, the second one is, is uh, doesn't there got to be one for dude too? Like when it, you know, it suck if you're, you know, your young son, son uh, Bobby was abducted and he got the Amber Alert. Well, now the that's color, the chick. Starts, the color well, now starts to have more meaning. The color meaning. is yeah. better now, but yeah. that's that's the chick. That's why you left it amber. That's why a chick is abducted. They need it. Yeah. I, I hate to say, but a, a young male needs to be abducted, and we need the male. The Ben Alert. Yeah, the Ben Alert sounds like something you rub on, on sore well, joints. Okay. We'll work on that. All right. Beth. Yeah. You're 17. Yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So, uh, <laughs> went, so, so we you, went home. So your dad said, if you're going to come home after 3 a.m., don't come home. 
Yeah, because he has to be at work at 5. So, I mean, if I wake him up, he's he just gets all cranky and stuff. And my bedroom door is very loud. Right. Uh, I see. It has a squeaking thing to it. Um, oh, so usually if I stay at late, I'll just go home with friends. Wait, your, your, friends. Bedroom, your bedroom door is very loud. Yeah, well, it, it, it's like, when you turn it. Yeah. How, so about, how about you grab a little WD-40 and squirt it on the hinge? <laughs> By the way, this is, uh, hold on a second. I've now learned because I'm married. This is beyond <laughs> the realm of possibilities for any female to do something My like that. My wife does like that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Check for penis next time you guys get in bed. All right, Beth. Anyway, so you went, where'd you, you went home with this guy? Yeah, I went home with him and um, well, we told his parents and stuff. So I just, I slept next to him, but we didn't do anything the first night. Um, oh, wait, you told his parents? Yeah, we, well, we told his parents that I would be spending the night. Well, when you got home at four in the morning? Well, yeah. I mean, like we called from the movie theater before we got home that late, and we Susan's told them coming all, to spend the we're night planning on. Huh? Uh, again, Dad, uh, I'm gonna need uh, I'm gonna need some water soluble lube, and some condoms, soundproofing. And and some, which room is the quietest room? In the and house? some pop tarts because I like the carb load before you know I drop mine. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeesh. All right, and uh, so you slept over. Did you have sex with him? No, not the first night. All right. Um, we ended up hanging out a lot after that, and then finally, like, we went to the beach one day. Um, after the beach, we just ended up, I guess, getting in the mood, and, and it happened and stuff, and it was awkward. Oh, we we got in the mood. Oh, Beth. <laughs> All right. All right. So you had sex, and now what? He's, he's blowing you off? No, no, actually, um, we don't talk at all. We haven't talked for four months. And Hold on, I guess we're reenactment. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Beth, he's now what's he's blowing you off? No, 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 not yeah, at all. Well, no, we haven't <laughs> spoken in four months. <laughs> never. We never. We don't. That's it. We don't even look. We look down when we walk. But he's not blowing it. you off. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> well, wouldn't he have to be like talking to me in order to be blowing me off? Well, no, I mean, blow off is about not responding. You had sex, and then you didn't really talk too much after it. Well, it didn't happen, like, right away. It wasn't, like, a silent thing right away. It was kind of, like, slowly. I just started, like, not looking into his eyes, and he stopped even walking the way around me and just completely ended. Okay. Not stopped you, walking the way around her. I thought she was going to start singing. <laughs> I have to interpret that. Uh, all right. So, anyway, you had sex, and uh, you broke up. That's it. Yeah. Um, there you well, go. The thing, the thing is, too, is his friend came because um, he kind of isolated himself from everybody. He wasn't talking to anyone when we were going out, and he was always around me, and he was always mm -hmm. saying, like, come over, come over, like, I miss you. And, and I would always think, like, he's going to get tired of me. And one day his friend Ryan comes over, and um, uh -oh. he was with Ryan the whole time, and I was, like, asleep. And the, later on the night, um, I was going home, and on my way home, he was like, I got to talk to you. And I was like, okay. And he was like, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And then he ends up breaking up with me the next day. Um, and that very... All right. I, look, this is not Tiger I, I, Beat. I, I, had, I had to, fill, I had to follow up. Come on. It's, it's challenging. Uh, you know what I just start picturing? I just start picturing a you, collage. I, I say you... I like a girl like, putting a collage here, like cutting out pictures of... I was watching you listen to her, and I just... I was imagining, like, a giant Egyptian trireme with... with like a guy... Roo, <laughs> Yeah, that's, where that's you all were. it was. You were in the ca in the galley. <laughs> I was just in a galley. There's a fat guy with studded leather belt. And he was just pounding, cracking his whip. Pounding Another guy drum. Boom, sweating boom. and pounding on a. And I was I was slave ship. Just yeah, that's what I just saw. rowing. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. That's, I saw that thought bubble over your head. And, and <sighs> I just completely drifted off. I, on the other hand, was uh, fascinated by the nuance of the story. It's a a, a right. popular satire I, of contemporary mores. I particularly like the cameo appearances. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get what... All right, so what happened and who cares? <laughs> well, um, I guess he ended up calling days after that when we got back together again. And then finally one day I flipped after having sex with him. We had sex kind of a lot. And I kind of told him, well... I don't want to see this anymore. Like, he's acting really awkward, and I told him, like, I can totally tell that there was somebody else that he was kind of attracted to, or that he started talking to or something. How old is and he? he ended up, he's 18. All right. It ended up. I'm sorry? It, it ended up. It ended up being to where, um, I think I found out, well, I found out later on that there was, like, a girl he hooked up with, but at the same time, I was hooked up with someone else, too, so I, it didn't bother me at all. It gets better. It gets better, Adam. Come on. Bro. Hey. All right, what's going? I'm about <coughs> I'm about to smash my skull in with this carrot top coffee mug. I well, put I'm myself out of my misery. Like, was it bad? 
that I had sex with him right away? Was that maybe... Ah, uh, well, that has nothing to do with... experience. It's nothing to do with why it didn't work out. It didn't work out because it didn't work out. Right. And, and by the way, nothing really is that bad if you learned something from it and don't do it again. It's well, if you were 14 really... and learned a horrible lesson for a painful cost, that's different than 17, 18. Yeah. This is just, this is sort of normal stuff. Yeah. That guy was try having fun, not that India. Or he was, it sounds like he was. He was obsessing with her, and then he kind of, it just it didn't work. It sounds like they were just not meant for each other. I like her dad's policy, though. If you're going to come home after uh, 3 a.m., don't come home at all. Like I said, crap myself, National Guard. You want to hear my dad's policy? Don't come home. Grown -up? No, here's what it was. <laughs> huh? What? Adam, who? Who? What? What policy? <laughs> over over what? Why should we have a policy? I think every time I left the house, my parents hoped I didn't come home. That was their policy. Yeah, their policy. Yeah. I'd be like, where, where are you going? I'm going to our town's house. I'll be back. Uh, don't worry. I won't be back too late. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Enjoy. Stay. Enjoy. Yeah. Eat some poison. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to join a cult? There, that Jonestown is awesome. How did you miss that? Yeah. You been to, uh, been to uh, French Guiana this time of year? It's beautiful. It's paradise over there. How did no, you no. miss getting picked up by a cult? <laughs> I should have. I should have just joined a cult. It yeah. would have been better. Everyone would have been happy. All right, so. You would have been coming with the cult leaders that just has sex with all this off. Oh, it yeah. would have been awesome. <laughs> First, but good solid year of uh, being cornholed <laughs> by the uh, elders, and then then I start to. Uh, then, then I start my yeah paybacks a bitch, and then I start up with the young ladies. <laughs> uh, okay, here's what I want to say. Oh, Friday, no, Thursday. Thursday night, we were uh, driving home, as we always do. You from and I. The, uh, you and I. Yeah. From the uh, radio station. Oh, here we go. Going along the same route we always go. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've gone on this jag a couple of times. I still have no satisfactory answer uh, to it. Uh, we're driving along the uh, 10 freeway, one of the bigger freeways in the uh, Not one of the Southland. bigger, one of the most traveled freeways in the world. In the world. In the world. Uh, going into uh, the 110 downtown freeway, which is uh, one of the most traveled freeways in the world and one of the most busiest intersections in the world yeah. the world <laughs> not california not the united states yeah, the world. not north america yeah. the world yes and uh thankfully for 20 years now 20 since years the olympics. since the uh, los angeles hosted the 84 olympics they put up these uh, multi-million dollar freeway signs the same signs that steve martin talks to or talks to him in uh, la stories right same sign. It's going to give us a little heads up on... Uh, Chris just figured out what we've been talking about. We've mentioned these signs a hundred times. Chris goes, oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm picking it up. Yeah. 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 Sound like Floyd the Barber. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, God. Look him up on the internet later, Chris, see what we're talking about. Okay. All right, here's the point. Uh, these are multi-million dollar signs. are supposed to give you a little heads up on what's going on up the road I a have, little bit. Yes. <clears throat> Drew and I pass under uh, several million of them a year on our commute uh, never say anything now they flash the amber alert when the kid was abducted they put on there which is fine that's that's a good idea although uh, it's it's as, as if they discovered a use for something they should have had a use for for 20 years and somebody just decided to dust them off and put missing kids on them every every well, six fair. months be fair now we are up here in los angeles driving by the this orange county and riverside county we have a good half hour an hour away from here they will tell us what's going on in the Devore Pass. Yeah, once in a while. Or the Toro Y. Yeah, when the ramp was closed off on the Ball Street exit yeah. in the Devore, which is a good 70-hour drive from uh, yeah. where we're going, and they give you a heads up on that. In uh, fact, just, tonight I expect to see something about Francis, the hurricane. Here, I, I think there will be something about road closure. Here's the thing. In Florida. They closed the goddamn 10 freeway when it went into the 110 this on, is on Thursday, on Thursday night. night. Uh, they could have put the stupid thing on the sign that said, Hey, uh, dear Tards, attention Tards, in the next two miles, the freeway's going to close. You might want to take you action. You might want to get the hell off the freeway yeah. instead of just uh, heading to this bottleneck at uh, midnight. No, about park the parking lot. Parking lot because uh, they stopped the freeway. Uh, nope. Never is. Just uh, run right into it. And uh, as I've said uh, many thousands of times, why can't we work this out? How come there's nobody's ever accountable? I have cops in here. I yell at them all the time. What's going on? Who's in charge? They oh, laugh at you. Well, that's run by a division of Caltrans, and they don't communicate with the highway. Right. What? Can we get somebody on any of this stuff? Really? This is how it works? Got a million-dollar sign that's going to tell you what's going on in the freeway, but they'll tell you when the goddamn freeway's closed? What goes on in here? 
How come nobody's ever accountable for this? Well, why aren't there things telling you on that thing on nightly telling you what's going on? And for Christ's Hourly. sake, when you close the goddamn freeway, the next freeway you come up to in the next two miles, put it on the effing sign. So we'll get off. It, 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 it boggles the mind. It's like they're taunting you with this uh, ridiculous sign they put up there that costs millions of dollars. And I want to know, has anyone ever seen anything on that that uh, could pass as useful information in the 20 years those goddamn signs have been up there? Is there anything? I, they got the Amber Alert up there. It's like, uh, yeah, this kid's missing. Uh, yeah, what, what do you want me to do, slap the siren on the top of the car and start driving on the shoulder? That's it. I'm going after this kid. I, I can see. Like, I'm just driving down the freeway. I'm, I'm heading into work. Uh-oh. Kid's missing. I reach in a glove box. I grab the siren that Starsky and Hutch used to. I slap it on the top of the car. I pull an e-brake. I whip it around. Now I'm going into traffic, but I'm driving on the shoulder. I reach back under the seat. I pull the saw it off, and I do that <laughs> pump. I pump it with one hand. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bring this kid in. Yeah, that's great. What am I looking for? Uh, it's a cr cream-colored Camry. All right, I'll get right on that. What, what's the kid? Oh, the kid. I like when they give the weight of the kid. I just say he's a five-year-old. I don't need the 43 pounds. I, I, don't, I don't know what kids weigh. I don't have a scale. I mean, if he's morbidly obese, say it. Like, if he's five and he's 210, let me know. Other than that, just say five. I don't need the weight. Oh, what am I going to do, by the way? I found the kid. Uh, it said 43 pounds. Eh, this guy's going about 39. I'll put him back. Couldn't be him. <laughs> I know everything else matches up. The Dental camera, work, the yeah. prints, everything else. But uh, you see, he feels a little light. I thumped him. The I camera him was up. brown, too, so it couldn't be. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing they ever put on these goddamn signs. Just put, when you close the freeway, put it on there. Who's in charge? Who do we get to talk to in this town about any of this stuff? Oh, it, it, this, <sighs> well, what's wrong with L.A.? How come when you go to other towns, they seem to like have things? What's wrong with L.A.? I was like, too many legals? Do we not? Is, 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 it's too big. What don't we have here? Is it populated with too many people from different lands who too, really don't care? Too decentralized, maybe. I we, really we, we, do. I, here's what I really, I really do feel like. I really, I really do feel like Los Angeles is a rental car. <laughs> that's what it is. You, you look around. You can't find a person that's from, you barely find people from the country. And if you do find people that are from this country, they're from you know, Pittsburgh, they're from Michigan. They're from, and all they want to do is talk about their beloved Steelers or uh, the Philadelphia Eagles or whatever their team is. And they, they want to go back. And they, all they do is, oh, Boston, 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 Boston. Red You've Sox. been here for 22 years. You, you came here when you were nine. Can you get over the Boston thing? As it, see, that's it. Nobody cares about L.A. They, everyone just sits. Everyone just sits here and talks about uh, and talk about uh, the Sox. That's it. What did Anderson say? Oh. National show. It's a national show, man. Why are you gotta like make fun of baseball? Oh, shut up. What, what are you talking mean? about? No, it's a national show. We're talking about. You're you're talking from like North Hollywood. Let's 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 talk national. Come on. Anderson's high. I'm okay. I'm so high right now. It's just <laughs> give me a break right now. But honestly. Adam, come on! It's an, and we're not we're not broadcasting just from from North Hollywood. We're broadcast. It's from all. He's high. Over. Yeah, I'm totally. so high. Come on. What are you doing? Are you yeah. smoking pot? I'm smoking. I'm smoking crack tonight. But no, what come are you on. doing? Are you the drink, Pittsburgh, you the some Pittsburgh some Steelers are something, or something that you should respect. And it's, it's oh. people. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't mess with oh, Pittsburgh, a, oh, please. Pittsburgh. Yes. Oh, he's a Pittsburgh. He's a penguin. Every day, penguins and Steelers. Penguins. Yes, please. Anderson may be high. Penguins. I'm a little high. A little high. What would you do? Smoke some reefer before you came in tonight? I, I, Corolla, come on, dude. Really, it's just, it's just the show does not come from just North Hollywood. That's what I'm saying. Anderson's high. I'm, I'm sending a a, a, a little high. I'm yeah. putting a uh, life, well, you know, sort of a preserver. Preserver, no, no, please throw out one, Drew. Please. All right, Anderson. Don't ever interrupt the rants. Okay, but you know what the rant is. Okay. Come on. Okay. Tonight, tonight, it's Labor Day. Come on. We can do it. But it's not just, you know what, North Hollywood's got a team. No, they don't. So let's just not, like, make fun of the rest of the teams. Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. Uh, oh, see, I brought up Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's the problem. Don't do that. That's we love Pittsburgh. We like Pittsburgh. That's what did Penguins. Like that's what Go did Penguins. It. Thank you. That's what I mean. You see what we, you yeah, see? Yeah, I have a tattoo on the right, my right shoulder, right? Yes, I'm, I'm from L.A., right? Right, but... 
Yeah, she's, I got a, I got a tattoo. Yes, exactly. From the yeah, exactly. Five, I'm five, proving five, your five. point, Corolla. Here we go. Penguins. Hold on. Here we go. Here Let's we go. go to break. Anderson it's twenty. He called John and Jeff. <laughs> that's the worst show I've ever heard. She's All right, like, come on, buddy. Now that's the weed talking. That is a great radio. I don't program. smoke weed. I just want crack. Come on, let's go. Break. 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 Wow. All right. We'll take a break. Yeah, Anderson needs a break. I think a break. Uh, well, uh, Drew's going to, uh, he's hey, going to call the medevac it. unit. Yeah. yeah. Get uh, Anderson. Anderson, you okay to walk home tonight? Okay. Yeah. We'll take oh, a, Actually, uh, you know what? Take a take, take call because I got to put the break together, please. So take call. Uh, okay. Take All right. call. All right. What else? What do you want to talk about? No, just <laughs> if you could take a call, that'd be great. All right. I have to run the break. I just what what direction would you like me to go with the call? No direction, Corolla. Sure. You're the, just you're in cash. charge. I, but I'm honestly, saying, Drew Adam, take a call. If, if you she's just, calling just burn from Tulsa, I, I'm saying what if they start steering it toward L Los Angeles talk? Should I avoid it just or would like to go with it? Avoid Pittsburgh. Honestly, I won't notice. Is Sarah, Sarah, what's talk up? about Pittsburgh? But just take, right. take a call. Thank you, Sarah. Right. Sarah. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's happening? I I can't have sex like. I can't even wear a tampon. I don't know if I'm too little or if there's something wrong with me or what. Well, have you gone to the doctor to see what's going on there? Like, um, I went when I was, like, in eighth grade or something because, like, I was having cramps, you know, and they went to go, like, do an exam. And, like, you know when you go in for an exam, they have, like, that little torture device that they Speculum. use. Speculum, yeah. And, um, like, they couldn't even put it in me. They... All they, all they could do was get a Q-tip and, like, just scrape some skin and really? see if I was okay. Yeah. Well, you need to go back now that you're yeah. 18. Uh, maybe you've got a, a very uh, thick mm -hmm. and fibrous hymen that needs to mm -hmm. be sort of dealt with, or maybe mm -hmm. you're having some spasm of the, the muscles down there. That's a possibility. We, we, yeah. Anything ever happened to you? Because, like, I mean, I wonder, I've been having my period since I was 12, and I can't wear a tampon, so I obviously I have to have some kind of opening if I can have a period but like I just I mean I can't have sex or anything I've tried it just well this needs like, to be dealt with with the gynecologist there may like. be some some things that need to be done here a gynecologist you were never sexually like, abused or anything of that sort nothing to make it super was anxiety. I ever yeah um like my stepdad touched me some I guess I live I moved out I mean I live by myself now but I lived with my dad for a while cause of so it that, makes us wonder whether something those, those sort of traumatic kinds of experiences may be triggering some muscle um, contraction down there that's a possibility but again a doctor needs to look in there and check mm -hmm. it out and decide whether or not there's really something anatomically or something wrong or whether you just need to learn how to calm down and and by the I'm way really I, don't I can't really hear you Okay, I, I, there, there, this may be something called vaginismus, which is a which is a difficult yeah. to stop contraction of the pelvic <clears throat> muscles, and there there are various treatments for that. And, and I, I may be speaking too sort of flippantly by saying just kind of calm down, but anxiety is a big part of that process sometimes. Uh -huh. And and you, first and foremost, you need to see if there's something anatomically wrong. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, and a little therapy for uh, stepdad taking a pass at you. Yeah, we got that taken care of. That's Good. cool. Well, right, you got him taken care of, but did did you get taken care of? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, it's just I decided I can't live with him. I mean, it's wet and it's not something I should dwell on for the rest of my life. So, uh, oh, right. oh, contrary, Sarah. What, well, trauma survivors always believe is that they've handled it. I dealt hey. with that. I put it aside. <laughs> it leaves implicit kinds of wiring behind in your brain. Let me say. Let me how you uh, relate to people. Let me uh, let me give a. Uh, how about I got I got some ideas for uh, PSAs, public service announcements. As you know, we sit here and we hear the uh, national feed, and we hear the one about airplane turbulence and uh, how, what your body's made for, and all these other ridiculous wastes of money. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just uh, basically just deluged with uh, advertisements against secondhand smoke and stuff. How about a uh, little PSA that says, uh, "If you got diddled, you need therapy." Yeah. Uh, most of the people who get uh, screwed with, either verbally, physically, or sexually, don't even seem to know that they uh, require a little therapy, or they're going to go through the rest of their lives uh, not only destroying their lives, but we're going to be responsible for them as a society. And their kids. And their kids. How, how about that? Not interested? Or is uh, airport laptop computer theft at the top of the trouble pyramid? How, how, why don't uh. the public service announcements have any correlation to life? 
Forget the public service now, but how about the way... How about the of, politicians? How yes. about anything? Yes. But anytime you turn on the news, yes. right in the middle of an election year, it's, do we ever hear anything about anything? So far, all, all I hear about uh, is John Kerry. It was Either he's on a PT boat or he wasn't or his, or his, or his crew liked him or they didn't. Uh, it's like, what the F are you talking about? Yes. Does anyone even know? No. All right. Here we go. All right, we got to take a break. Did you hear, uh, by the way, uh, Hillary Clinton? Uh, Anderson's ready to take a break now, but hold on, buddy. Hillary Clinton is, uh, did you hear her little uh, talk to uh, reporters about uh, Bill, who was uh, in the hospital? No. Oh, my God. She is like, uh, she's just like an ugly fembot. It's like uh, somebody created a mule fembot. I don't think she's, I'm wondering the door to pop open. She was just talking about, just batteries like she was it. talking about some sort of. Uh, uh, she, she, she went out there and she said, um, this is before her husband, Bill Clinton, had his uh, bypass surgery. This is like the day before. She went out there and said, you know, thanks for coming. Don't worry. Bill's in good spirits. Bill's doing great. And he's going to be in, he's going to be back and in fighting form. And in, and it just, just, no, it was like, it was like a campaign rally. Yeah, you know, nice. it's like, look, yeah. how about, uh, yeah, he's sick. We're worried. That's my uh, husband. That's my husband. Yeah. Cracked. I got to get back in there. And, you know, it's just, she literally said, He'll be in fighting form in a number of weeks. He's doing great. Oh, by the way, he didn't have the surgery yet. How do we know he's doing great? He could die on the table. Right. Oh, it was just, it was just like this weird painted on face and this, you know, every the camera's clicking and she's standing there smiling and she's all rigid and stiff and she's got a mop handle up her ass and she's talking about, all she could talk about is how he's going to be back out there and don't worry, he's going to be, he's going to be fighting for him in just a couple of few short weeks and he's doing great, he's going to be great and everything's great. How about being a human being for 10 seconds? Thank you. All right. Yeah. Why give the speech, by the way? I know. You're, are you a doctor? You're saying how his surgery the following day is going to go where they split his ribs open? Oh, it's going to go great? By the He'll way, they, be back out on they the... Made some, the surgeons made some comments about the cognitive difficulties people have after these bypass surgeries. I found uh, it very I interesting. we got to get into that. All right. Anderson says we should go to break. He's Anderson, what do we talk about when we go to the bathroom? Okay. Take a quick break. Penis size. That's what he said. We'll be right back after this. Number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right, so uh, we're talking just before uh, Anderson told us to go to break that uh, I saw Hillary Clinton on the news, uh, I don't know, Thursday or Friday or something, talking about her husband Bill's uh, impending uh, very serious surgery, just uh, going out there like a true politician. He literally said BS. he's going to be back in fighting form in, in uh, no time, that he's doing great. Uh, all pre-surgery. It's again. It's the kind of stuff you would talk about after the surgery if everything went well. Well, first of all, surgery. He was just before surgery is when he was in a fair amount of danger because you can't be sure he's not going to have a heart attack while you're sitting around waiting for the surgery to go down. Right. Then there's the procedure and its inherent risks, and he's still in trouble. You know, you may <laughs> if he yeah. starts going south tomorrow. You know, you know what that's from? What alcohol withdrawal. Alcohol withdrawal. Yeah. Oh, because what? No boozing while you're. If he if he starts going bad tomorrow the next day, that makes me think about that. Why? How's that work? Just because the withdrawal takes a couple days to kick in, and they're on opiates for a couple of days that tend to block the withdrawal. Uh huh. And then if they just unexplainedly they can't seem to go bad, uh, you know, that's, that's usually why what you can't about. booze when you're in the hospital. No, it's hard. Adam. It's, they don't have a bar. No. No. In yours there would be, but. No. Well, no bar. No bar? Anyway, like, that'll be even interesting. Even, like, in the lobby, you know, down where the gift shop is. That will be interesting. No, no. bar. I know. Because they have a cafeteria. Listen, if they did, you'd be yelling about the hours that the damn thing was open. So it's a good thing that they don't. Oh, you know oh no. The, ho the hospital bar would be great. Like, uh, would you like uh, Kamchatka <laughs> and Sunny D? <laughs> no. How about some orange juice? Uh, no, we have fruit punch, and and we got some Smirnoff and fruit. No, no. Any regular... Stuff that people would eat. No, uh, we have now. We have. Would you like to order an appetizer? We got uh, breaded 
and deep fried saltines. But we can have a, animal we'll have a dietitian talk to you about uh, what we have to offer here. But <laughs> yeah. the, the, the surgeons were trying to be exquisitely um, accurate with the, the, in, their, in their press conference. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about the risk. And they were saying, look, this, this was a, a common procedure. This was right. a routine procedure. It is a very serious, fraught with difficulties. And each routine procedure has its own inherent sort of... Um, Thumbprint, so to speak, the things that happened during it that you can't expect. Wow, well, but not, but according, not according to Hillary yeah. Clinton. And they brought up the He's fact doing that, great. that after bypass, people frequently have cognitive changes. And they can't think straight. They, yeah, their thoughts go abnormal. Mm. And that was very, and it was brought up on the, I, I was look, reading on Yahoo, it was brought up on there too, but it was like, oh, but of course it goes to normal within a year. Well, not always, not always. Well, now here's what I heard about the cognitive uh, part of the procedure. It means the thinking, the, the, the end personality and mood, all kinds of things get altered. The brain function. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, you can tell us why that happens. And then secondly, I heard it was more of an issue in older people, older guys and uh, people that had a uh, some some form uh, family history of this disease or something like that. That if you're relatively healthy and relatively young, you have a decreased chance of that this is absolutely happening. correct. It's now, absolutely wh correct. why why does this happen? By nobody the nobody knows for sure. Presumably, it's because you're not the blood supply to the brain is not under physiologic control. It's a machine that's pumping the blood because back. Because you the shut brain. the heart down. You shut everything down. And so it just can't, things don't regulate normally and maybe things just don't get the oxygen they should mm -hmm. and cause a damage or a shock to it of some sort. Mm -hmm. Or maybe sometimes the blood pressure changes and sometimes little blood clots form. Mm -hmm. You can maybe shower the brain with that. So there's mm -hmm. lots of different things that could go wrong can happen. I just wonder, I, I you know, I just wonder who decided that politicians had to be sort of human. sociopathic yeah. robots, uh, all smiles and whatever? I mean, would have been great to see like Hillary Clinton like come out there and go, "Oh boy, am I having a bad day? Just, this is I'm scared to death." Yeah. Uh, I know this is a, a you know relatively common procedure, but they're splitting my husband's uh, chest open in about twelve hours, and I'm freaked out. Uh, I'm not going to even speculate on when he's going to be whatever I, you know he's in our thoughts and prayers and uh I'll, t I'll talk to you and tell you how it went tomorrow after the doctors tell me oh he's he's gonna be back in fighting form and uh just uh, uh, no time still smiles and he's still great he's great great uh i'm on the sofa watching i'm i'm doing better right <laughs> i'm not in the hospital getting ready to have the uh, rib spreader clamped onto me how, how good could he be doing <laughs> hey, really he's doing great He's okay. He found out uh, last night or earlier in the day he needed, uh, you know, open heart surgery. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, how good? How good is that? And by the way, what's your scale of great? So, a guy getting a BJ, how's he doing? <laughs> Stupendous. Like, well, what are you? Let's say we're we're fishing in Baja. What, uh, has that guy doing the same? He's doing great too. Everyone's doing great. Or guys awaiting uh, heart surgery doing do, 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 great. Okay. That's great. great. Oh no, it's great. Oh, so it's a mitzvah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, just uh, listen. We can't have a politician be a human being. A Bush can't deliver a speech without just uh, looking like he's uh, reading it off something. I, I, this uh -huh. is the direction we're going. What about all the reality TV shows? Let's have reality politics. How about I'm all, with you on that. Well, it, it's a huge trend yeah. in television. People are like, look, we're, we're tired of all the uh, makeup and lights yeah. and the BS and the scripts. We want to see reality. Yeah. That's, all, that's all the public clamors for. We want reality. We want to. We want to look behind the curtain. We we don't want all the the pomp and circumstance. We want to. We some gritty. We want some realistic. How about a politician? It seems like a human being. Sort of walking around all the time, giving the retarded old man thumbs up everywhere. <laughs> uh, by the way, I think that person would do well. I get the feeling I, it would too. You know who that person is, Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> He's got a speech all prepared <laughs> that the man wrote for him. He's got to throw that his, aside. But his brother from the hood tells him to talk from the heart. And he goes out there and he speaks from the heart. And you know what? At first, the audience is a little confused. But, but then, what? then there's one person. So, so <laughs> they won him over. He won over the audience. Oh, who knew? Who knew? By the way, you write that in a movie? Like, uh, <laughs> doesn't anyone raise their hand? Like, uh, yeah. I haven't seen this in 300 movies. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Tiffany? genius yeah. though and by the way let me just say this how can, how can chris rock I've, I've said this many times he's consistently he's like whenever they they do those things every once in a while i was like funniest man on earth chris rock number one you know no, no, number two um dave steve kirk bill kirkenbauer <laughs> I, 
I don't know, or three Geechee guy. <laughs> no, no, they, they always do. It's the funniest guys uh, in the world. Uh, Chris Rock always gets number one. How many unfunny movies do you have to put out before you get dropped down to number two? How many how many flaming turds do you have to release before you get knocked off the uh, number one funniest guy in the world perch? I, I, I think Chris Rock's stand-up is real funny. Don't get me wrong, but how many crappy, unfunny movies do you got to crap out before someone just drops you down to, like, two? I can see you haven't figured out that cinema business yet. I am. I got to work on that. <laughs> Tiffany? Yes. You're 20? Yes. What's happening? Um, well, I have been having sex for about a year. Um, mm -hmm. For the past six months, I've been with my boyfriend, and we have sex every day, if not more. And I have never been able to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. During intercourse? Yes. Have you ever had an orgasm, ever? Yes. yes. And how does it happen to you? Um, during masturbation. Mm. So just by yourself? Yes. What about oral sex? No. Never. Never? Right. Has he ever done that? Yeah. He, he tries. Does. Yeah. Well, that's how it's going to happen, Tiffany. That, that's how it's going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen with intercourse, that's for sure. That's the road you must travel, the oral road. You understand? I mean, we've tried every position and everything. No, no it's not going to happen with intercourse. The every it's position not thing. <laughs> Once it doesn't happen in the first position and a half, it ain't happening. Right. <laughs> um, your highest uh, percentile yield. chance yield. yield. Yes, your greatest yield would be you on top, just giving the rub and pretending like he wasn't there, yeah. like he was just a pillow with a boner. Right. If you, that that's probably about as good as it'll get. In terms of even percentage. that's not likely to work. No. Have him, uh, have him just work on the... With... What? Is there anything have... wrong with me? I mean, no, listen, no. I, I was just on... I did a radio no. show with a woman the other day. It was a psychologist, a well-trained. She was saying that the data suggests that 30% of women are able to have orgasm with intercourse. Other 70%... 30% of women over age 18? A lifetime. Or? A lifetime. Oh, a lifetime. That only 30% will actually have orgasm with intercourse. Right. But then there's that... It's even probably, you know, talking about a 17, 18-year-old, talking about a smaller percentage. Right. They even, right. Even of that 30%, probably half of them come on board around mid to late 20s, probably. Right. So, uh, 30%. Isn't that wild? So, 70% of women cannot have an orgasm via intercourse. Yeah. All right. That's it. I'm not trying anymore. <laughs> that's all I need to know. All right. That's it. <laughs> My wife's going to be like, uh, hey, uh, how about, no, no, check the data. Doesn't lie. No, wait, don't make. Don't call me. Don't ever call me. I'm an atheist. I. Uh, it gets a little weird when she calls me. I run me. my life off these numbers. Yeah, call Drew. Yeah, yeah. He'll tell you. Check the it data. with him. <laughs> it's like, uh, you check yeah. the numbers with Drew. Yeah, let that. Yeah. Check them out. This is uncomfortable, but yeah. Three yeah. percent. Three percent. Yeah. You're, you're, you're no good. Well, you heard it. Who else? You want to talk, Doctor Marcel? <laughs> All right. Oh, you want to talk? Want to get Bruce? Bruce on it? No, no. I was just kidding. I don't want to talk to Bruce. <laughs> oh, Bruce is here. Oh my God, he heard me. Yeah. All right. That's it. I'm done humping. All right. I always had a suspicion I should quit humping, but now I know. That's all. I've had anal sex and I passed. Well, that's right. You like you like you like the oral sex too. So there you go. The oral highway goes both ways for you and your wife. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. Well, take cells. I'm going to practice my new my new vow of 69 with engineer Chris. That's it. It's only 69 from now on. Assume the position. And uh, leave the headphones on. I want you to hear what I have to say. Nice. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Did you hear Chris just gave us the finger? Yeah. All right. Oh, if we only cared. Uh, phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine. Engineer Chris, you know the part where I didn't have my headphones on and I was just sort of staring at you. That's, that's where you go. Like, yeah, ten right, seconds. Right. Yeah, you do ten seconds. Right. Twenty seconds. Yeah. I like when uh, engineer Chris uh, screws up that part and he gives you the quick finger. Hey, <laughs> like what? What? Oh, I was supposed to get the headphones on and put the coffee down faster now. Yeah, you got to give us that. You know, here we go. Yeah. Well, yeah. I heard. I heard the music. We didn't hear the Anderson countdown. Yeah, that's what we miss. Yeah. All right, but you give me the finger there, bud. If you see my headphones, aren't I? Yeah. But Anderson in, is dispo indisposed as he is tonight. Just, just yeah. somebody's got to give us that countdown. All right, here we go. Let's get this right, down. Come on now, break let's down. break it down. Yeah. <laughs> Anderson, Anderson, like uh, minor 
who uh, struck a gold vein and went to town <laughs> drunk. Yes. You know what I mean? Hadn't seen a woman or whiskey in about six months. You're just, so uh, old, dude. You're so just old. Hit a, just hit a big vein of gold, uh, and he's in town. He's buying booze for everybody. You're so old. That kind of drunk. Yeah. 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 Just sloppy, belligerent drunk. Yeah. What are you talking about? All right, buddy. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's get it on. Let's go. Monique, 22. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Um, hello? Yes. Yeah. And by the Hi. way, what part of uh, Monique, 22? Here we go. Let's get it on. Here we Just go now. Just do it! What um, part of that? Hello? What, what more? What, here, here's what, what I'm saying. What's confusing about that? What do I have to say? I, 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 there are no words beyond... Wait, wait. You should say is, uh, caller Monique, 22, you're on the air with Adam. All right, here we go. Today, Junior? Here we go. Monique, you're on the air now with Adam. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, this is the question. I've been with my husband for two years. I have two kids, one of them with him and one of them with my ex, and I had to get married to him to keep my daughter, and I don't mm. love him anymore, and I met somebody else, which is a girl, mm. and it's really hard for me to leave. So. Dear lesbian. You had to marry him to keep your daughter. Now, in in there's got to be a huge story in that. Yeah, drugs. You know. You're a drug addict. I was not anymore, but so yeah, I guess I am. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Good. All right. And how's your recovery good. going? Really good. good. I've been clean for two years. May twenty second. All right. All right. I'm not going to ask the usual questions. Do you have a sponsor? I, yeah. No. Do I have a sponsor? No. No way. I just say no, but. <laughs> I think I'm talking, no I'm talking NASCAR. Yeah. All right, you don't have a sponsor. Drew doesn't trust uh, people that claim to be sober that don't have sponsors. Well, you're not sober. You're not using drugs, but you're not sober. Oh, interesting. No, I'm not using drugs, or, and I don't drink. I don't do anything. Like, All right. But well, somebody who's not off, doing drugs that is not actively processing, not actively replacing the drug addiction with some process is going to do strange and disturbing things. Okay. <laughs> That's just the way it works. Right. You're going to get depressed, well, I've always anxious. been a nympho, so I mean... Just yeah, well, the sexual right. addiction is what takes over when the chemicals are left behind. All right, listen. Uh, here's the thing. First off, what happened to you? Some kind of abuse? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a mess. Yeah. All kinds. Can you get some I therapy? I had to leave my house when I was 16 because of it. No, I haven't. No. Well, right, listen, just the program, Monique. All right, okay. just stay with the program. And look, uh, two things. Quit crapping out kids, for Christ's sake. You're 22, you have two kids, one uh, with uh, two different guys. Uh, you're a mess, you're abused, you never got any help for it. You're not fit to parent because of your past. Because and what you're calling I love somebody new is not really love. It's some sort of a infatuation, some sort of an arousal, sad, you know, gratifying experience that you have, some sort of chaos you need perhaps. But here's what you got to do. Do not leave your husband. Yeah. You need to cater. Well, but just listen. Get a state. You got to create a stable environment for those kids. That is your job now. That is your life. You have two kids. You're responsible for two lives. That's the priority. And in order for things to be healthy for them, you have to be in a solid program of recovery. So you got to go to NA, get a sponsor, start working steps, and some of this sexual addiction will will hopefully stop as well. All right. Money doesn't sound exciting. It's not exciting. It's not exciting at all. Can you? Can you? Here's. But it's more nourishing and more satisfying. On behalf of stuff. your children and uh, society, can you stop acting out and start taking care of yourself? Yeah. All right. All right. Good. There that's you go. That's all we need to hear. And uh, that's, that's the best we can do. Again, back to my uh, public service announcement thing. Yeah. We don't. We don't want to give a heads up to anyone who is uh, just abused and molested uh, that they're going to need a little therapy before they start crapping the kids out. And that's not a focus of our society how about, how, whatsoever. By the way, the health problem of our time, which is the drug addiction. We Just a little bit about that. The children yeah. Go. Where have all the children gone, Drew? Yeah. Now, we gotta we got to worry about secondhand smoke. Yeah. That's a first-rate killer. Yeah. That's that's what we need to focus on. And once we lick uh, smoking on the beach, uh, then it's time to focus on uh, the uh, wholesale abuse that's going on in this country of uh, the young kids. But first, we better uh, really zero in on laptop computer theft, because that's, uh, you laptop know... Laptop computer at the airport, and, and then, yeah. of course, the number one killer 
of this belts. country's youth. Air turbulence. Air turbulence. Yes, of course. And anyone who's flown knows that uh, rarely do you take a commercial flight in the United States without carting at least a couple of body bags uh, off of each plane. Because your body's not meant to withstand no. airplane turbulence. No, it's made turbulence. for rollerblading. It's made for childbirth. It's football. made for bad food. It's made for football. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> No, it's not made to fly. Yeah, no. No, 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 it, no, no. It made, no, 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 by fly. Turbulence. Well, as so you know. The flying parts, it's totally, totally uh, they would agree with that. Yeah, as you know, Drew, uh, speaking of football, professional football teams take uh, commercial aircraft oftentimes and, and fly commercial style aircraft from, you know, place to place. They lose at least three players each time. When they're talking about the injury report on oh, any team, deal. the people that are on the injured reserve list, these are that's 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 from flying. Of course, that's not from what happened on the field. No. It couldn't possibly because your body's made for football. For football, but not, but not there, not the flying. Right there, you go. Yeah, not, really. Not that you're flying turbulence. They're, let's they're, just let's just let's yeah, let's just use your logic for one second. In the uh, history of uh, the NFL and college football, in the billions of miles flown in between Michigan and Nebraska and all. All the all San Diego going out to play the Giants. All uh, ever one player lost to turbulence, or uh, uh, as opposed to the uh, hundreds of thousands uh, that went down on the field. Think about that for a mm-hmm. second. That's your example, really. All right, all right. that's what we got folks on though. All right, so uh, it's all folks on that. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Well, that's it, everybody. That's the show. God bless you for uh, tuning in tonight. We'll have uh, April Manson in here tomorrow night from Quintuplets. Uh, mm-hmm. New show on. I think we uh, had Andy Richter yes. on from that show on it. Fox, right? Yeah, I think cool. so. All mm-hmm. right. And then uh, Jamie Kennedy after that. So until next time, it's Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the, the, the producer for Loveline is Anne Engled. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.